What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video by New Type Sith. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can be updated on more nerd news, lightsaber reviews, and much more. Today, we're going to be having our first breakdown on the channel, and the reason being is because episode six of Book of Boba was just too good to be true. And if you haven't seen it already, I highly advise you stop watching this video right now because this entire video is spoilers. Every single thing on this video is a spoiler. So please, if you have not seen episode six of Book of Boba, I highly suggest stopping watching this and coming right back to it once you've watched that episode. Now that we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna be doing a full breakdown on episode six of The Mandalorian, ha, <laughs> just kidding, The Book of Boba, episode six. And so many Easter eggs, so many characters that we never thought we'd see again, and some characters we never thought we'd ever see live action. So strap in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and let's review episode six of The Book of Boba. All right, as we start episode six of The Book of Boba, first thing we run into is Cobb Vanth. He is the marshal in the second season of Mandalorian episode one. Uh, first time we've seen his appearance, he was holding Boba Fett's armor. Uh, here we're obviously seeing uh, some of the pikes going through his town. Uh, and obviously Spice isn't cool going through his town. And uh, the name of the chapter from the desert, uh, really thought it was going to be about Cobb Vanth. But uh, obviously we'll be seeing some other things. Uh, now we'll be seeing uh, Mando. He's coming through looking for Grogu. Honestly, as soon as we got to this point in the episode, even though we were literally less than four minutes in, I was losing my mind. Um, I knew they told us last week, you know, hey, I'm going to go visit a little friend. Did not expect that. And then we were treated with R2-D2. And just so many of these scenes, like just even him landing the N1 Starfighter just reminds me of the prequels so much. Uh, so many cool Easter eggs. Uh, here we see a really cool uh, looking droid carrying some rocks. Um, if you couldn't tell already by just seeing that image, you already know what that is. Um, pretty awesome seeing the Jedi Temple being built, uh, obviously, before he starts his school, which we've seen in the sequel movies. Obviously, that was a total disaster. Uh, this is one of the funniest scenes, honestly, in the entire episode. It's uh, the little droids make a bench for Mando so uh, he can wait for whatever comes next, either if it's going to be Luke, Grogu, or even if he's waiting for nothing. Such an awesome scene seeing all these things together, especially the robots building, once again, the Jedi Temple, everything involved around it and the planet itself. It's just, ugh, it, it's crazy. That they're in Octo or Octu, however they say this, um, planet's name uh we start to go through the forest itself you'll start to get uh theme music that we're all familiar to and there we go we see our little grogu our baby yoda the pikachu of star wars training right next to luke skywalker who is obviously the most popular guy in all of star wars history and to tell you the truth the deep fake that they did the second time around is perfect it is damn near impossible to tell the difference between real life Mark Hamill and this deep fake. Um, once we started this part of the episode, we see that Luke is finally starting to train Grogu on um, being force sensitive. And it's really cool to see um, Grogu messing around at first. He was trying to get a little frog himself and obviously he needs to be disciplined. So Luke, uh, kind of a reference to when Yoda pulled the X-Wing out of uh, Dagobah Swamps, uh, kind of like the same thing that he's doing with Grogu. Uh, you'll see a lot of similarities uh, during uh, this moment in time in the episode. Another really cool thing is uh, Luke starts to tell Grogu about the history of Yoda a little bit and how he was also a master of his. And then this is where things get insane during this episode. Something that, you know, I thought we've seen enough of, but obviously we haven't seen it from certain angles. And that would be Order 66 from Grogu's perspective. Um, this shows uh, Jedi's being slain by the clone troopers. Uh, and this shows that Grogu was there at the temple during the time. Um, and we are seeing two Jedi's being hunted down right in front of him. Our three Jedi's right in front of him. 
And uh, the craziest thing is, is I, I really, 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 really wish we got to see who saved Grogu, but obviously I know they weren't able to do that so soon. But the fact that we even got this scene alone was insane. And then the second biggest thing is we got Ahsoka Tano again. She has returned. The last time we seen her was in the Sorcerer episode of season two of Mandalorian. I honestly did not think we were going to be getting her again until the full-time Ahsoka series. So the fact that we're getting her this early in um, the year, especially Book of Boba, honestly, I know a lot of people have been upset. They've been wanting just Boba Fett stuff, but I really think this is truly showing the real story of Star Wars. Um, yes, the show is called The Book of Boba Fett, but at the same time, this is a Star Wars story. Right here during this scene, got choked up a little bit. Uh, Din uh, was Mando, was really, really trying to see Grogu, and uh, he's not really understanding the importance of Jedi training as they, they can't have somebody they care about around them. So uh, he has to make the hard decision of giving Ahsoka, uh, you know, the present for Grogu to give to him instead of, you know, himself. And as we see here, Grogu's very upset. You can tell that he senses Din, uh, Din's presence. Really cool nod is uh, this part right here. Luke can see that uh, Grogu's a little upset, so he takes him on a little bit of a training uh, exercise. And this right here is so cool. This is just showing the same training that he did with Yoda on Dagobah, all the flips, twirls, jumps, just everything is just such an awesome nod at that movie. And the fact that we're getting a little glimpse of it here in 2022, you know, all these years later is just fantastic. As we're progressing through this episode, you think we've already seen enough, and then boom, we get to see Luke with his thin neck lightsaber, which is so amazing. Episode 6, that lightsaber was so iconic, so the fact that we get to see it so many times now again in 2022, even though we got to see it in 2021 with Mandalorian Season 2. Another really cool thing is here, if you guys remember from Episode 4, uh, New Hope, uh, we got to have this awesome little training droid, which Luke used with Obi-Wan on the Millennium Falcon when he was trying to uh, kind of trying to learn not only to be a Jedi, but he was learning force sensitivity and how to sense things around him. And quickly Grogu uh, started to master these techniques and you could already see him jumping around doing flips when halfway through the episode the, the little dude can barely walk through the woods and now he's doing backflips looking like little baby Yoda himself. This is also a cool thing is uh, we've never had Ahsoka Tano and Luke Skywalker in the same frame ever, especially during live action. So the fact that we both get to see them in their full-fledged badass forms it's just, it was honestly just spectacular to see it. Really cool that we get to see Luke Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano in the same exact scene it is just insane. I never thought we'd ever get anything like that. Uh, Ahsoka likes to tell uh, Luke he's just like his father, which is such a cool thing. Uh, obviously, you know, Ahsoka training under her father, Anakin Skywalker, which is now Darth Vader, is just so cool. Jumping back into the book of boba part of the episode uh, finally din is returning back to tatooine after giving uh little grogu the armor that he had made for him in episode five uh we see here fennec shand kasantin and boba fett and you know the whole cyborg crew everybody's sitting around the table trying to plan what they're going to be doing for the next step of war or how they're going to start this war with the pikes itself at this point in the series um i really have no idea what was going on as far as the war i mean we have one episode left we had probably about 10 to 15 minutes left of this episode and i didn't know if all-out war was about to start right here and then and then boba said hey if we need an army or we need some foot soldiers, I think I got some. So he goes to see Cobb Vance again. And when he goes to see him, he you know, explains to him his town is just as much in danger as most Isley is and everywhere else. And the whole Tatooine planet itself is going to be taken by the Pikes itself. So he tries to get him to come on his side. And obviously Cobb is, you know, thinking about it. So in this part right here. You know, he's telling uh, the bartender, hey, you know, you got to go rally up the troops. I need to talk to everybody. 
And then the craziest thing Star Wars could have possibly done to us. And this is by far my favorite scene of this entire episode. If you don't know who the silhouette of that is walking in the desert, uh, you obviously haven't seen the Clone Wars series. This is one of the most badass villains in all of Star Wars. Not just Star Wars, just in general, like the sickest bounty hunter. I feel like he honestly makes Boba Fett not look as badass as a bounty hunter. And it is the infamous Cad Bane. And if you don't know who that is, you need to stop watching this right now. Go watch the Clone Wars, uh, all the seasons, Bad Batch. I mean, this guy has been one of the most ruthless villains in all of the Star Wars animated series. And uh, seeing him here in live action was something I never thought I'd see. I mean, just seeing him in person, just he's menacing. He's terrifying. He has the same voice as the voice actors. And he is just 100% bad ass this guy is not playing around every time we have seen him in any episode cad does not play around he is quick to just make you know any judgment he needs to he kills his target and he gets his money and gets his pay and gets out so the fact that we see him here warning Cobb about boba fett telling him to stay out of it i will pay you more than what boba is planning on paying you to just stay out of it tells me that we're going to have an all Out War, Episode 7. The finale of this show is going to be absolutely insane. I mean, Cobb Vanth, Chrysanthemum, Mando, you got the Pikes. I mean, dude, are we going to get Crimson Dawn? What else are we going to get in Episode 7? At this point, I don't know what else they can't give us. I mean, we've had Luke, Grogu, and now, once again, Cad Bane. We are getting the Clone Wars. We're getting lore that we never thought we'd get to. I mean, this is just insane. I mean, I'm, I'm please, you know, make sure to comment below if you guys, you know, are enjoying this. If you were excited to see uh, Cad Bane, um, I think as far as seeing Ahsoka and Luke, those are big shocks for me. But seeing Cad, like, I know I've repeated myself like seven times, but this is insane. Now, him and Cobb are about to do the whole, uh, you know, like, Western standoff. Uh, who's the toughest cowboy in town? Uh, they do a quick draw. Obviously, uh, you got to watch the entire episode. I'm not going to, you know, spoil it by having the scenes. But, obviously, if you're seeing uh, Cad walk away, you already know how things uh, turned out. So, then we're going back to the cantina. Uh, we have the Pikes going to hang out. They're bringing, uh, you know, some sort of gift with them. They've asked, you know, hey, can we take your helmets to clean they said no and then all of a sudden pikes just randomly leave and you could tell everybody's a little bit suspicious and boom the worst case scenario happened um obviously they put up they put a hit for boba they're, they're letting him know what's going on and at the very last part of this episode we got luke and grogu again i thought we were honestly done seeing them and boom here we go have luke showing the armor that din had made for little grogu and look at that chain mill just like we all thought um that's amazing the closest thing little dude can get to mandalorian armor and then luke says you know what i have something even better for you and if you guys don't know whose lightsaber that is that is yoda's that is master yoda's lightsaber okay that did not ever think we were supposed to see that again in legends comics uh that thing's supposed to be blown up into thousands of pieces so they obviously threw that one right out the window uh also thanks to carter blue mamba for teaching me that little fact but yeah, just insane. So now Luke is sitting here trying to give him the hardest choice ever, which is, are you going to be a Mandalorian or are you going to be a Jedi? I personally wish that he could just let him be both, but obviously we can't uh, have both. I really hope you guys enjoyed episode six, because to tell you the truth, I think this is the best thing uh, we've seen Star Wars in years. I really hope you enjoyed this first breakdown on the channel of The Book of Boba, episode six. I, like I said, a hundred times through this episode, probably the best Star Wars thing I've seen in years. Um, episode 7, I have no idea. Like, I don't even know what's going to come next. Like, obviously we know, like, some sort of war, badass fight's going to break out, but 
I have no, no idea what to expect. I'm really hoping to see a uh, Cad Bane, Bubba Fett fight. That would be insane. Uh, Cad Bane and Bubba Fett are two of the most ruthless bounty hunters ever. So the fact that these two are both live action and both going to be going head to toe, that's going to be insane. And on top of all the other awesome side characters we have in here, like Fennec, uh, Chris Anton, the Cyborg Power Rangers, uh, freaking Mando. I mean, everybody. And hopefully uh, Cobb Vance comes back too, because honestly, that dude's a really cool character and it kind of sucks that he got taken out the way he did. But at the same time, Cad Bane is such a badass that I wouldn't put it past him. Thank you everybody again for watching this video. If you'd like to see more like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel as it helps us grow and push this channel out so more lightsaber and Star Wars nerds like you and I can enjoy and break down videos together and review awesome Star Wars and other awesome nerd merchandise. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you next time on New Type Sith and may the force be with you. This is the way.